We have another guest. We're breaking all the records. It's not just one talking head. It's two. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> so, it's two. Heaven help it's us. It's two. Yeah. So those who have watched this channel before, they know me, but they don't know my guests. So Chris, could you tell us a little bit about sure, yourself? I'm not yeah. asking for your origin story. We can, yeah, we can put that in the, in the link below, but who are I'll you? I'll dump and... a backstory on you before you know it, Anthony. If you're sure. hitting the eject button as quick as you can. <laughs> uh, so my name is Chris. I go by Crispy. It's a nickname of mine. I have a YouTube channel I started earlier this year, uh, and it has been going for maybe seven months. And I've I was prompted uh, to start recording my thoughts on my um, efforts to change how I'm running games and how I experience the hobby because I, I came to a bit of a, I had a bit of an epiphany that I, I wasn't getting as much out of the hobby as I could get. I was getting glimpses of it, but I want more than just a glimpse. I want something that's repeatable uh, and I'm looking for that in my own experience and and I want to I want to share that with my players. I run an in-person game, uh, a weekly in-person game, and I have been very fortunate to have players that are willing to let me experiment on them as I go through this. Hey, I want to be in character all the time uh, when we're playing. Of course, we're not uh, we wouldn't go so far as to be method <laughs> actors, okay? So I don't get the texts from someone in character. No, no, no. But when we're there at the table, uh, we we want to be completely immersed. We want to role play uh, as we would describe role play as being. So, and my def the definition I'm using now, which is not the same as what I was using a year ago. A year ago, I would just be in the perhaps the uh, the the standard definition. As long as I'm tracking arrows on a on a character sheet, I'm role playing. Uh, right. And now my I'm much more in the camp of uh, role play means that you're treating that character as if they exist, if they're real in a, a world. And if that imagined fantasy world or sci-fi world or whatever the setting is, we're pretending that that's real too. And then we, we get that real, um, it just has a totally different uh, immersion level. And so my players, as I've sure. experimented with doing different things, and I try to share my thoughts on what I've tried and what's worked and what hasn't worked uh, and what we're still working on, the my feedback from the players has has all been overwhelmingly positive they thought this is just amazing like we have not we we thought we had we were just scratching the surface before of what we could experience with these games that we can't get from any other medium we can't get that from mm. video games we can't get it from board games we can't get it from tactical type games um, we we get something different when we're actually role playing so that's been just it's been hugely rewarding uh and I'm very encouraged that there's there's perhaps more out there uh, like me that just didn't realize, look, you've been in this for over 20 years and you've just barely scratched the surface. You're just at the veneer level of what role playing could be for you if you're if you're willing to kind of push push that into a different definition of just, you know, a, an adventure game or something like that, sure. which are fun. And don't get me wrong, it, caught, it had me hooked for 20 years, but now I'm looking at it and saying, no, I, I need something more than that. So Or different. Yeah. That's me. Or different. Yeah, something different. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a, a certain amount of luck, right? When we're, when we're introduced to the games, mm -hmm. it may be in, maybe less so now, but when we were young, <laughs> when we were introduced <laughs> yes. to the games, yeah. the people that were playing them with you were also being introduced to the game. So nobody knew yes. anything. So there's a certain amount of luck that your preferences would align. Yes. You, you might uh, find yourself constantly changing groups or, or, or mm -hmm. using up groups because you can't find the, it's just not fun or, or whatever exactly. people quitting because yeah. they were, they were mismatched with, with preferences. Mm -hmm. So with this change that you have asked your group to uh, explore with you would then come what our topic is, for today, which is preparation, a change in preparation in order to produce or help support mm -hmm. a, a new experience at the table. So I watched a video of yours uh, from a few months ago talking about, you know, biting that particular bullet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought we could start with what was your typical preparation for a, for a, you know, a non-special, a, a typical session. Sure. Uh, what what did that used to be like? So 
and this, I, or I imagine that others will share my, um, my background. What I used to do for preparation is I would think, I would think in terms of, um, hook line sinker. So uh, the hook is the, the obstacle, the initial obstacle that I would have in mind for the, for that particular adventure, usually based it's contextualized with what had happened before. So if we were running sure. multiple, instead of a one shot, if we were doing multiple sessions, I would say, well, the, okay. So from thinking about what happened last time, what would be the next, what could be a next, um, hook that would, sure. would draw the players in. Then I would, I, uh, that hook would be followed by a line and I would write a few, maybe a paragraph or something for myself of saying, well, here's the, at the, the, as they interact with this obstacle, here is the, here's the first things that they get, the first secrets they can discover, or here, here's what's going on. And then of course the sinker is the twist at the end. And so I would have that, I would, I would my preparation would be spent, um, a, a fair amount just scripting out that not so much as script as in they do this, then this, then this, but more, here's the bigger, here's the event, here's the, the uh, surface level explanation of it, but here's the twist on the end. Then I would spend a lot of time thinking about uh, locations. Like I would try to have three or four interesting locations and then I may draw them out or I would, I would spend a lot of time thinking uh, because the theater of the mind switch, which is what we do now, um, that beforehand, I wasn't that I was a uh, very much a miniatures on the table in a grid or we eventually departed from the grid as I've been moving gradually over the years towards more theater of the mind. Uh, but then we had measuring sticks and that kind of thing. And so we would, I'd be thinking about that. I'd be spending a lot of time thinking about the assets that I would need for the game. Uh, so whether that's images that I could find or maps that I could pirate off someone or draw myself if I wanted something really terrible and in crayon. Uh, and I would do all of that. <laughs> And uh, then I would, of course, go through the process of thinking about the villains, the those that would be in ob uh, up uh, in opposition to the party. Uh, there, I would go through either published materials or I would try to create my own to with varying degrees of success and failure, uh, and come up with a a number of potential foes that they could run into. Uh, and it would uh, for a two hour, well, let's call it a three hour weekly game. I was spending probably around eight to ten hours. Uh, a week mm. just getting that all of that ready okay. yeah so I've, I've got some questions the locations and the villains yes as you prepared them what were the criteria that informed those choices like the for example did a location become interesting because it allowed the characters to make use of specific abilities that they had or was it interesting because it looked cool or, you know, it had yeah. unusual terrain features. I mean, like, was it connected yeah. or reactive uh, I, to who I the would say players that, are? Or? To the players themselves? Yeah, I tried to. I, I, I would say to various degrees of success. I think I would be giving myself too much credit if I said, yes, I looked at what the players could do. And then I thought of interesting parts of the environment that they could interact with. I think more often than not, I was thinking, well, okay, so this is a underground cavern, but what would make it odd? Okay, well, there's some there's this feature over here, and I'll spend a little bit of time thinking about how that what that is, and then I'll, maybe I'll draw it out, uh, the crayons I mentioned earlier, and I would <laughs> and I would get that kind of ready so that I was okay. So it's not just a I didn't want just four four walls, a ceiling, and a and a floor, but something that's a little more sure. there's something they can interact with. Uh, where I didn't spend a lot of time, which I regret. Um, is I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about the other people that populate the world. I'd be thinking in terms uh -huh. of the enemies and the locations, but uh, what I neglected in the past is I neglected the NPCs and sure. and um, the other characters. I mean, maybe NPC yeah. isn't even the right term for it. It's more of the world is populated with others than just the heroes and the 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 goblins they're supposed to kill this week so it's it should be it should be more dynamic than that i think now that as i've sure. but that's you would ask what i was doing before so that yeah. is what it would be my wife used to well she still uh, accuses me of this sometimes is that i would spend uh, essentially like a part-time job getting ready yeah, for yeah. a three-hour game and she's like why are you doing this <laughs> seems silly and at one point i was trying to 
to uh, use a, a like a, t a TV that we had down. So I was doing digital mapping and then the digital mapping uh, that evolved into, oh, well, we're going to have, um, you know, little characters, digital characters that I can move around that have their own sight, uh, line of sight and vision characteristics. And so then I'm, I'm spending hours and hours working with occluders and you know, yeah, uh, yeah. light sources and all of these things. So she, she, which is really good of her to do. She just said, look, uh, you know, you are spending <laughs> enough time that you could, you know, this would be university credits. If you, if you looked at how many hours you're spending on this and, uh, but that's what I was doing. And I did that for, uh, like I said, a weekly game for about 17 years. Sure. Is what I was wow. doing. So uh, quite but, a bit. And, and we changed up. You had mentioned earlier that, uh, sometimes, you know, people will, they get lucky and they are not lucky based on the preference of their group. And what would happen with me is that I would eventually just feel like, okay, I'm, 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 um, I'm bumping up against the system maybe, or maybe, maybe I just need to change the game. So we would change the system. Right. Like, Okay, well, but play the same fifth way. edition's not doing it anymore, so we're going to change it up, and we'll we'll try DCC now, and now that's not doing it anymore, so we're going to change that up, you know. And so, but I think that the secret sauce that I was missing wasn't the system itself; it was, it was the way, it, it was more the yeah. style that I was. Uh, the I was procedures of with. play, and yes. the end goal, yeah. the intention for play, the intention. Yeah, I think intention is the. Actually, I really like that. I'm going to write that down. It was the intention <laughs> that I have my clipboard, of course. <laughs> so, so yes, That's awesome. I'm, I'm going to write that one down. I like that one, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of hobbies inside the hobby. You know, you've got the miniature painter people and the map. You know, the careful yes. map designers. It's a hobby all all by itself. It They'll feed in and and you know it's a this this great cycle of creativity. But the one thing it does is stack up the amount of time. It does. Know? Yeah. So Absolutely. being completely devoid of artistic ability myself, I am free of those burdens. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good thing, I think, actually. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, okay. So the, oh, the, the NPC thing. Yeah, I mean, I understand we want, if we're thinking about being able to embody characters in play. Mm-hmm then it seems like reductive to talk about player characters and, and non-player characters. But at the same time, that terminology has been around for almost 50 years. Yes. It's entrenched. And, it you know, it, 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 it's one of our few pieces of entrenched and, and totally understood, not misrepresented mm -hmm. terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I say NPC or GMPC or PC, Everyone everybody gets it. About. But if yeah. I say character, it could cover a whole multitude whole of sense. So, so I, yeah. I, I can't get upset about, about that one, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right. So what I'm hearing is you're spending an, much more time in preparation than in play Oh, in this uh, original version. Yeah. And the original version, probably three times, three times as much preparation than, than actual play. Mm -hmm. And over time, this had, decreasing satisfaction for you. Yes. Now there are some, I understand there's some out there where uh, world building is their, their, their joy. that's their jam. That's the joy they yeah. get out of the hobby is creating the, um, you know, all the intricacies, the, the political intrigues and, you know, the fact that nature works slightly different or physics works like slightly different or d designing their own magic systems. And while I can respect that creativity, that's not, I get more of the enjoyment of the hobby from the, from the actual play, the, seeing the, having the interactions with players and having that, inter, right. like seeing them gel together and come up with innovative solutions yeah. and really get into their characters and even get to the point where they feel like they're, they're, they've got a connection with this character. They're no longer thinking of what would this character do? They just are instinctively know what the character would do. That's, that's how they are. So that's, yeah. I'm not a world builder. Some of some out there I'm sure are. And if that's yeah. the case, then that's fine. That's just not what I was. Uh, that's not what I looked forward to. I was like, Oh goody. I get nine hours of prep time for my three hour game. Right. It's not what I was uh, not keeping me up at night with excitement. Uh, yeah. You're not living their lives. You're living your life. Right. You're discovering your own preferences. So we can, we can see some hints, right? 
Mm -hmm. Why is there all this preparation if the enjoyment comes from play? You'd, theoretically, exactly. you'd want to use all that time for, for play. So there has to be some sort of connection between all of that prep and then creating the world that yes. people want to interact with. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, that's an interesting sign, but you also mentioned immersion, right? So yes. we've got, we have role-playing, we have in a sense, portraying a character, which doesn't need, need to mean embodying the character and certainly doesn't no. have to lead to an, an immersive experience in the perspective of that character. Mm -hmm. It could lead to an immersive experience of portraying the character, but that's a whole different right. kettle of fish, right? Right. So you want to have a play experience that allows people the, the time and the, the freedom and the relaxation to be able to, to bring about that attentive state where immersion can happen. Or are we talking about just immersion being, I'm playing my character? Like, which usage of that hot topic term yeah, that is about? a hot topic term. I, I, what I, what I envision when I I say immersion, my my target isn't. Uh, I guess what, how how would I describe that? It's not easy, so don't. It's worry. not an easy <laughs> one. No, and I appreciate the question because it does it does make me think. Well, what is it when I mean when I when I encourage my char my players to be in character to be? What does that actually mean? Um. What I what I want what I'm looking for when it's immersion is I'm looking for an authentic uh, portrayal of that character's personality and um, weaknesses and strengths that are like for example if I have a I have an 18 year old in the group for probably for a limited period of time he's he's probably I don't know a third of the next youngest player like he's, he's quite a bit younger than the rest of us uh, he chose to play a, a 70 two-year-old Italian hitman. Okay. okay. So I, what I want from him for immersion is I want him to play the guy as if he has arthritis in his left knee and he's not like, I'm, I'm not looking for an 18 year old with a 70 year old skin suit. Like I want him to, to really be authentic with that. I want the, right. I want the players to, to authentically portray and that's not that I, I'm not looking for, I'm not an accent guy. What I'm talking about is I want their interactions, their in-world interactions to be believable to themselves right. and to everyone else. It's and when easy that for happens, everyone else at the table yeah. to imagine. And so, they, those, so they're picturing yeah. him. Like, so this player who's, I mean, he's, I'm not kidding. Like we're all three times older than this kid. Like he's, he's a lot <laughs> younger than us. But I want in when we're in that motion that that moment for that brief period of time, uh, we are we're seeing him as he's describing himself in the world as a 72 year old man that's his best days are long past, but he's still got some skills that are needed in this particular obstacle uh, right. and then play it like that. So like I, that's and then and then to a point where we can all believe him when he says that he's a 70 year old man and and this other guy's one of the older players is playing a young guy and they they can do that in an authentic way that that really does feel like that is a real 70 year old man that he's playing and not just like i said before just the he i mean he's an 18 year old and he's just got great hair like and he does the things that an 18 year old would do rather than the things a 70 year old would do so right yeah because he's not really considering not considering all the, the other things like yeah, yeah. and in, in context of the of the setting and so for me it's it's really is are you interacting are the players able to interact in the world such that the world feels like it's becoming a higher resolution of itself so it's be, it's being fleshed out by them uh you mentioned this in a recent video and i thought i think i completely agree that look if the, you had mentioned the bakery the bakery <laughs> thing across the street and and I completely agree with that, Antia. I think that that's the kind of resolution that I want players to bring now. Whereas before, I was trying to envision everything that could possibly be in the environment, which is uh, limited by my own weaknesses of imagination. Whereas if we can engage the, if I can engage those players so that they're imagining things, uh, and I, there's things I try to do now to to 
make the the ground a little more fertile for that imagination. So we're playing in a 1975 New York City. So I have the hits of 1975 playing in the background. Like, so there's right. the, I have the sounds that I'm trying to, I'll have a few assets prepared images. You know, this is what the 1970s cars look like. Everyone, here's the, here's the dress, 1970s dress. Here's what, <laughs> here's New York City, Times Square in 1970. This is what it looks like. And, and those kind of things, just trying to, to, to help seed the ground as it were, so that then they yeah. They they realize no, there's a payphone in every corner. Like that's just what we have, right? That's that's they're not thinking cell phones anymore. It's a big hard. It's a you know our lives are governed by either your you know Android or iOS or whatever yeah. it is. But but taking a step away from that, what is it like? What would we do differently then? Because we don't have the the modern conveniences. This is you know that. So it's I try I try that. So when that's a long answer, Anthony, I apologize. You should have been warned no. in advance. But I think it's, that the, it's the for me that's immersion. So when I I when I say immersion, okay. I want that authenticity, that believable. Okay, it it makes sense then that you would do that because of who you told us you are in this or your what your character is, sure. and and in the setting as well. It all makes sense. It's harmonious and it can be interacted with others and still remain believable within the context of the, of the game setting. Gotcha. Okay. So I've, I've come to a, a different usage of the term immersion. So for what, what you've described, I describe as in character play. Okay. And then if we can play that way, in a way that's comfortable for everybody, then we may feel that our imagination, like our those of us who, who are visual imaginers or, or whatever, but anyway, our imagination of the scene can become such a focus point that like the flow state, you hear people talking about their game session, like, I can't believe it's been four hours. Like, it feels like yes. it's only been five minutes, that, that kind yeah. of thing, that those yeah. hints that, that you've been paying attention to the the thing in the game that interests you so for me that's in character play so i've been paying attention to the character so intently that i've forgotten the passage of time or or whatever so that's that's mm -hmm. immersion for me but to focus on on in character play as you've described it to then link back to our preparation what can we do in order to to make it easy for everybody to just play their characters Right. Mm -hmm. So the 18 year old can remember arthritis or shortness yes, of breath exactly. or, or did yeah. I take my night, you know, my nitroglycerin yeah, that's right. pill? Which pills have I taken? Yeah, exactly. My water <laughs> pills. And yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, and for everybody else to remember that that's true too. You know, mm -hmm. like when you start to get references from the other players about the specific characteristics of the other characters as if they're they're really seeing it, right? Because they're imagining the old yes. man, they're imagining the young man, they're imagining the the fashion yeah. plate in his flares <laughs> and his, and his yeah, aviator exactly. glasses. Exactly, you know. exactly. So these yeah. details come out. Is, they do. So how can we yeah. get there? The, so yeah, that's if a great you, question. Yeah. If Sorry, you are doing all the preparation, if you're doing eight hours of preparation yeah. and having to be the voice of all of those details, there's just not enough time. There isn't. Like you can't physically speak fast enough to populate that whole scene. No, no, no. You so can't. you felt dissatisfaction and you decided to find a different way. So yeah. what have you experimented with? So here's what I've experimented with. I've gone, I've gone so far as to say, I'm going to walk into this with just a rough idea of what the obstacle will be. And that's it. Now, like, so I've, I've gone from nine hours of prep time to maybe five minutes of prep time. And, and that was exceptionally uncomfortable and a bit of a train uh -huh. wreck. I got to be honest, Anthony, it was a bit of a train wreck because what, I, what I was doing then is I was still, I was still pretending as if I had that kind of uh, thought process in place already, but I didn't. And hoping it I would was, come from somewhere. Yeah. I was hoping it would just be reactive. I'll just react to this, react to that. But the, the problem I have with that is that I, I, while I could do that maybe with one player, maybe two players, I had five players. And, and reacting to everyone as they're trying to be in character, as you described. So in character play is definitely a focus of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, not, it hasn't been in the past, but this is a, this is a new development. 
Right, right. Uh, but once people get that taste of in-character play, they can't go back. They, 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 they're <laughs> spoiled so. forever. They can't go yeah. back to the way it was before. So my issue was that I didn't have enough thought, forethought, that I could react in believable ways to five different people that are that are running five very different characters and aren't just following one my like they I because I encourage my maybe take a step back. I'm encouraging my players now to come to the game prepared. And what I mean by that is I want them to be thinking about what their character wants, what their mm-hmm. character's secrets are. Like, I, and I'm, I'm like, I don't want you to tell me the secret. I don't want, I don't want that. I want that to be something that's going to drive you um, and may come out in play and may not and may change in play and may, yeah, and may be, something that you just throw away and discard and you have a new one for next week. But I want you to be thinking about that continually so that you're coming to the game ready. And then, uh, so I'm asking them to do that. And then I showed up with five minutes of, well, I think this is what, there's going to be a robbery or something. And then there's nothing else. Like no, the the lowest resolution thought that All I right. could possibly have. But I, I guess I, I, what I was doing, Anthony, was I was just stress testing it. So I, can I go from sure. nine hours down to zero? And the answer is no, I can't. I I had to have some, I I had to give some thought as to what the motivations of the the those that are opposed to the heroes of the of the which are what the characters are. So, what are their motivations? Why are they in opposition to the the uh, the player characters? And why? What are their goals? And if left unopposed, what will they be going to next? And uh, I had to give that some thought. So I've changed now. So where I give, I spend most of my time not thinking about locations and how I would change a location, but more thinking about the, those in the world and the events of the world that are transpiring that may or may not have been influenced by what the characters did last week. So I'm thinking about that. What's going on? What could they, they've ignored some things. They focused on others. Those things that they ignore those are just problems that multiply and and I want I don't want to leave those as just oh well, whatever happened with that oh yeah right whatever happened well whatever happened like so I want to have I want to have yeah. that be believable so I'm spending a lot more time thinking about that so it's I would spend maybe an hour or two uh, just with a pad of paper just thinking okay so what are the secrets that that could be uncovered this week and and those are, that's how I'm still retaining a little bit, you know, white knuckle grip on the last vestiges of how I used to run games. Uh, but okay. I'm, that's how I get that hook line sinker in there. What what are the secrets out there that could be happening? What's really behind the scenes? Uh, and then spending the vast majority of my time thinking about the the uh, the other people in the world, the other characters in the world, whether they be NPCs or. Um, villains or what have you they 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 all have to have some motivations in there and and what they're what they're going to be using for and i right because you had mentioned that earlier that the sense that the world like the way we talk about it around here is that it was empty yes yes there's the player characters and there's the and the villains and it just Mm -hmm. when you when you think back on the session you can't really remember anyone else being around yeah exactly yeah who shods the horses who does the like who like who grows the turnips like who is the we don't have any of those people until we need them. And then all of a sudden there's just the storekeeper there. And it's not like there's, there should be a, right. I much prefer, uh, especially since I like to run um, modern campaigns or, or near modern campaigns like 1970s. I, I, it makes sense to me that there'd be a full New York city with all of its noises and lights and sounds and smells, and it should all be there. So I spend and how a lot do you more do that without that. that being the whole focus? Yeah, it's a that's a that's a tricky thing, and and I think that when I think about it, I think of uh, I try to make a distinction with NPC and and PC between heroic and non heroic. So the 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 others are not um, while they have their ambitions and they're going to be pursuing their their aims, uh, they're not uh, the spotlight shouldn't be on them. So they're they're going to be doing a lot of that off camera off scene like that's going to be happening off there but it's it's a it's a challenge i don't know that i have an answer to that because that's something that sure. i'm still i'm still still working on that it's a it, it's a great question and one that i'm going to write down on my clipboard is <laughs> want to think about how do you do that because i don't know <laughs> 
So, well, yeah, and it, and it, and it, it will change, right? Like you mentioned, yeah. who you know, who shoes the horses? Yeah, you know, in the in the fantasy milieu, you're going to have a much lower density of of people that they encounter, maybe or lower frequency. But in 1970s New York, they're gonna they could potentially be bumping into people all, all the, time. the time it's like the the red dress yeah. scene in the matrix you know that that yes. tidal wave of people yes do you really yeah. want to uh and i've done that there? i i you know it's, it's it's so funny that you mentioned the red dress in the matrix because i i had the the main you know spokesperson for the the commission you know the commission that oversees the five families the five major crime families of new york and her name's Rosetta. And what is she? She's in a, a red dress. Like she's a lounge singer in a red dress. And it was exactly, that's exactly what I was thinking of is that matrix scene of the <laughs> girl in the red dress. Where is she? Okay. That's her. Right. So, um, so yeah, I'm trying to do that without being bogged down in, um, in too much narration too, because I'm, I, I'm trying to keep that. I'm trying to share more of that, um, that narrative time with players. I want them mm. to be able to say, narrate what they're doing. And in so doing, um, take more of the time. So it's not, it's not 90% of me talking, which is obviously a shortcoming of mine, but I, it shouldn't be so much. It should, shouldn't, shouldn't be so much of me. Um, uh, it maybe should be a, more of a sharing of, I don't know how, what the exact percentage would be 50, 50, 60, 40. I don't know, but, it, I, I think it feels more, um, it feels more authentic when it's, when you get that, like you mentioned that banter between players, like it feels, especially when it's in character play and they're talking to one another and they're doing so in ways that are believable. And it's not just them trying to win the scenario, you know, playing bingo with their character sheets. Oh, I've got this, or I've got that. They're just, right. they're, they're, they're being more, um, I don't know. It's, it, it just, to me, it, it's more authentic. They're more serious about what, you know, staying within yeah. what their character's expertise would be rather than what their yeah. player expertise would be. And that will involve dice rolls, of course. And we'd still, you know, we still have that mechanic. Yeah. Um, I don't so, yeah. find that it's, it's something I could put a percentage on. I don't find that it's consistent because it changes with the scene. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been sharing a call of Cthulhu campaign that we've, that we've been playing. Yes, I started watching it. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, and there's there's one moment that's relevant to this because they're all in one character's apartment. They're in Alfred Small's apartment. And they're ostensibly talking about the weird stuff that's been going on. Mm -hmm. I'm saying nothing. For most of that that entire session, I'm I'm sitting there saying nothing except when they read a passage out of the book, of course I'm I'm the mm -hmm. text in the book and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it's five o'clock in the morning. It's 1931 in, in Boston. And they've, they've woken up Alfred Smalls and they're, they're not talking about this scary event that happened. So they're doing other things. Mm -hmm. They are raiding his hidden liquor cabinet because it's prohibition. Mm -hmm. They are starting mm -hmm. to cook breakfast and they're moving around this kitchen. This kitchen didn't exist a minute prior to them saying it prior yeah, of course right yeah but but now these these three characters are navigating the space and all they're doing is talking to each other and the the conversation is about this weird stuff mm -hmm. but their description includes how they're moving around the space and and how they're they're you know that the the eggs are starting to to burn so i'll take over that while you go and and, and do something else and that's excellent yeah it, so I'm not required to do any speaking for them to create the apartment. Mm -hmm. I just have to remember what they, what they. Create. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Like it's, a, you've got to remember what it is. Like if, if they're going to do that, which is wonderful when they're doing it, in my opinion, it would be a waste if I forget that they had said this and I had corrected them, they said it. And why, why should I correct them? Of course, there's going to be a kitchen there. Of course, they'll have of eggs. Course. It's 1931. I mean, if they're not going to have eggs. They're not going to have, you know, Captain Crunch. I mean, that would be a problem. <laughs> but they're going to definitely have. They're going to have eggs, and yeah. absolutely a Prohibition era hidden liquor cabinet. That's going to be a thing. Of course, it will be. Yeah. yeah. So it just it all just kind of flows. But when we go outside and we're heading toward a different location, then I'm going to have to explain more, and the of world course. is starting to move around them because they've set some things in motion. So there's the reaction principle. They've called 
right? Yes. We'd like the police to come here because we're worried because right. something's going to happen, right? Right. So I'm responsible for bringing the police or some other circumstance in. So that's the world reacting, of course. But mm -hmm. there are two other elements. There's acting and interacting. Mm -hmm. So what are the people that they don't know about yet that are in that are intrinsically linked to their situation? What are those people doing and how do those things mesh up in time? Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the timeline for these reactions? You know, they've they've called for the police. How long reasonably does it take for the police nice. to show up and what kind of police will show up? And, mm -hmm. and then the interactions, they're going to be interacting with each other, but they're going to do things like buy, you know, roasted chestnuts. Mm hmm on the street. And so I haven't talked about many people on the street. I talked about some, some woman pushing a pram through the snow and, you know, and you see the, see everybody twitch cause they, they want to help her, but they're also in a rush. So what, do, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and they, they buy these, these nuts and we describe that there's urchins, you know, it's, it's the height of the depression. Right. So there are these, basically homeless kids yeah. staring in wonder at these heated nuts and wow, we wish we could eat today. And, and right. what does that, what does that do to our hero? Right. Mm -hmm. As he's, as he's buying the nuts, does he just see it as backdrop or is it something for him to interact with? Right. And uh, so these little moments kind of let me fill up the city, hoping that the player will then continue to imagine and, and, and propagate yeah. little scenes like that, like yeah. people, you know, freezing to death in alleyways or lined up right. at, at, at workshops yeah. or yeah. Yeah. soup kitchens. Waiting and, on, and yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I can't, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough words to, to fill the city for them, but I hope I can no. drop pebbles in their imagination to cause ripples to spread through and, mm -hmm. uh, and have them imagine around themselves. Maybe they'll share it in their own description and maybe they won't. And, and I can't concern myself. I don't really care if we all imagine the same thing exactly the same way. No, no. Just, that was a bit of a surprise for me, Anthony. I, I you know, the fact that the, uh, the game still runs exceptionally well when we don't have exactly the same picture in our head, it still can <laughs> yeah. work. Like, because from coming from someone who used to have the grids and, you know, the measuring right. sticks and the line of sight things and all of that taking a departure from that and going more towards theater of the mind and then becoming comfortable with the fact that we may not picture the room exactly the same but it can still work and be believable for everyone and we talk about it afterwards and say well how did you think of this well i pictured it this way and and what, what's interesting and i counted it as a big win is when uh talking about the game afterwards so many of us had the exact same picture and I think right. it has to do with the details. Like if you, I think that the details, like you mentioned, those small, um, seemingly small, but not insignificant um, descriptions that contextualize the world, like the chestnuts, the cold, the snow, the men, you know, blowing into their hands and stomping their feet, trying to stay warm as they line up for maybe there'll be some work for them today. Um, those, those details I, I think are really important because they, they, and it doesn't have to be a lot, but just a little bit. Cause then people, st the, the players start thinking about when did I see something like, I saw a documentary on the great depression once. And I remember reading this, or I read this book or I, you know, and, th and then they just that small invitation. I think that's someplace that I need to work more on my own, making a note for myself that the, <laughs> those small, like the small details, I'm just going to call it the chestnuts the 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 roasted chestnuts are yeah. are really important in that um they provide a catalyst perhaps for for perhaps. serious players to say okay i can take that small detail and i can interact with it in an, in a different way or i can remember that and then that'll inform my next decision or perhaps not the next decision but the decision five decisions from now where I'm thinking back to that, yeah, there's people in 1931 Boston who haven't eaten for two days. Like there's, that's going to be, that's yeah. definitely going to have an impact or it ought to have an impact uh, if the world's going to be believable. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. exactly.
and how will that inform my choices and how will it help me understand other people's choices and yeah and, you know who are the villains anyway and, exactly you know, exactly and are they who but, we everyone thinks they're villains or is that the case or is it something else is it it, that's why I think uh, I haven't done a lot in horror, so I admire those that do. Uh, I haven't played any Cthulhu games, um, but I do think that uh, that, that adds this uh, very interesting, uh, I guess, sinker is what I would call it. Like, so yeah, on the surface, it's this, it's a rapacious uh, factory owner, or it's someone, whoever it is, but maybe it's maybe there's something a little more to it that's even more sinister than what people think. Uh, right. And that would be. That'd be interesting. So I admire that. I haven't done a lot of that. I should, but I haven't. Yeah. Well, we all have our, we all have our draws. Right? Yes, you know, they, exactly. Yeah. My, my particular hill was trying to, to get in a position where I could run pulp heroic games. You know, the, the books that I love to read, I found right. any games I could never run. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, could I ask you a question that a about that, Anthony? Yeah. Could, if, sure. if you don't mind, when you think of preparation and how what you do to prepare, uh, do you spend a lot of time thinking about you know books, that, favorite books that you've read, and how do you incorporate that information if that's what you if that's what you end up doing? Um, I do and I don't, uh, because I find that in in games there's this one huge dividing line of preference between gamers, and that's. <laughs> Those of us who who picture role playing games as a storytelling activity, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a big spectrum of of the methodology of telling the story, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's the game master putting you in a situation and and railroading you along at one sure. extreme, or all of us choosing to follow specific tropes in a specific way at a specific time, following emotional beats. That, that's another version of following the story. Yeah. But the other side of the divide is role-playing games as an experience. Okay. So in that case, if we go into the dungeon and it, it turns out to be a total party kill, nothing has been lost. Those, those characters, you know, mm -hmm were for us to enjoy as an experience and we we played them through to the end of their lives there was no sense that we were part of an epic fantasy story that was going right. to end somewhere right so right um my side of that preference is i i'm on the experience side oh me too absolutely yeah as you just so when it, i absolutely when i think about books i don't think about trying to follow the plot or provide the the beats mm -hmm. I want to provide authentic to that genre, the the, the type of characters that they should oh, meet okay. in okay. in the type of environments. And so my preparation, which, which I think of as preparation for improvisation. Yes. I want to be able to, in the back of my mind at all times, be ready to conceive of an action. Mm-hmm for the characters that I'm responsible for, mm -hmm. a plausible reaction for the characters I'm responsible for, and believable interactions for the characters I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. Without thinking what would be a good decision for the story. Right. Right. I want to be entertained and surprised looking back at our play saying, oh, that's a too. pretty cool story. Yeah, yeah, me too. Look at what happened. I never thought that would happen. Yeah, exactly. That, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you yeah. can get that on both sides of this preference divide. You can get that experience. But where my preference is connected is in the way I bring that feeling about. I don't get that feeling of surprise when I'm working with the story. Yeah. Thinking of just plot. Yeah. Yeah. But I do get it when I think, Holy crap! What did what did they just do? Right, I've, <laughs> I've got I've got to stop that. Right, in the role yeah. of this of this character, and and do right. I have the the tools and resources and skills that let me as the villain in that moment mm -hmm. stop that? You know, and mm -hmm. and I will use the system to determine if the villain can or cannot interfere. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and so. You know, we're all playing the game together. It's all mm -hmm. just about the experience. So yes, mm -hmm. I definitely think about this type of literature that I like, but I'm not trying to reproduce it. I don't want to think in no. terms of chapters 
I don't want to um, bring about those sorts of things. But I will, I will end sessions on cliffhangers. Oh yeah, oh, not yeah. for not for story purposes. No, but a little bit for genre fidelity. Yes, should be of course. cliffhangers. Yeah, exactly. But, but more so that we have that sense of okay, yeah. play has stopped, and it helps That's us right. transition back to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I like that. I like that. I, I, what I like, uh, when we, when we are get to that point where I'm about where my, the, uh, the hint, I suppose that I take that I've ended it at a good point is where I get a big sigh from all the players. Like, all, <laughs> oh, like they're just gasping for breath at that last, like, I, I can't believe it. We got this far. Or I can't believe that. What, like, what do you think that's, or like, oh, what's going to happen next? I have no idea. No one has any idea what's going to happen next. We'll have to see what, what next week brings and we'll all come into it. Yeah. And then, um, so I, it, it's not so much like you say, it's not so like a, well, the cliffhanger here is just so that we can, propel it to the next uh it's more uh, i i at a certain point i do want players to kind of wait with bated breath and well, what can what what am i gonna what are we gonna get out of this or what's gonna happen next or it just seems like nothing is going right and it, and i i like that um that tension that players can experience right. and so that's what i i look for is that moment where it's oh you know so we'll we'll call it there and then we'll spend a good half hour just talking about what happened talking about it yeah. Someone's staring at you like, don't you end it here? Don't you end yeah, it here? Yeah, yes, oh. Jake, I've seen a few players that are like, quick, do something before he ends it. We've got to get something. We've got to, we've got to quickly open that door and get through it before you. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I really like that idea of preparation for improvisation. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, read more genre um books that are in in the same type of genre that I'm, we're playing in with that idea of, hey, if I expose myself to more of this material, then I'll have that well that I can draw on if, if I need a character and I need a character that's believable in the setting. And so I'm thinking of those characters that I've, I've either seen port portrayed or if it's on film or I've read about if it's in a book. Um, so that's, I like that idea of that my preparation isn't so much just to create hard and fast things, but be able to improvise on the, on the run. Um, yeah. but without falling into the quantum kind of quantum ogre type thing where, right. Cause that's um, a story tool. Right? Cause that's a story yeah. tool. And I, I'd, I'd rather like you, I really like the idea, the, the spectrum that you've put the storytelling experience. And I understand that it is a spectrum. You wouldn't necessarily, you'd probably have elements of both in, both cases, yeah. but I lean much more myself to have an, uh, more of an experience. Like you said, it, it shouldn't be, oh no, the story is derailed because my guy uh, met the bus and, and he came out for the worse uh, after meeting the bus, but that it was, wasn't this an amazing opportunity I had to play the 70 year old and it's just too bad that he was not quite quick enough to get out of the way of the bus. But that's just, that's just the way it was still an experience that everyone can look back at and say, that was fantastic. And I'd loved it the way you played that, that character. And we're starting to get glimpses of that where players are complimenting each other for playing in character. And, yeah. uh, and that's reinforcing more in character play. Like I, I right. think it's great the way you're playing this, or I can't believe that you played it that way. Uh, I never would have pictured you being able to play that. Like a guy that's been a, a sober inner inner uh, individual his whole life. Like I would be surprised if he ever touched a drop of alcohol. He played a a pilot that was only a good pilot if he had been drinking, and mm -hmm. he played that like it was incredible. What and I, I talked to him afterwards. He goes, yeah, I've never been, I've never wanted to touch alcohol. It's just never been a thing for him. He just never 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 at all. And in real life, he never would. But he said, but I had the greatest time playing that character in character as one that, you know, I I'm only good behind the, the yoke of the plane. If I've, I've had a few right. long, longish draws on my flask. Right. Right. And it was just great. Then everyone to see everyone really focused on that. That I, I would say is not story. That is experience. And, yeah. and uh, I think that's great. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm still looking for more. And so I've been 
busy writing all my notes as you've been talking <laughs> about what I can do to, to be more efficient with my prep time. Because I know I'm going to need some just so that I come, I can sit down at the table and feel comfortable that, okay. Well, that's the I'm, thing, right? Feeling comfortable. I'm ready. Right? Yeah. So, but not what nine I, hours of no, detailed no. notes that yeah. in more, more cases than not, they're not used anyway. And I end up filling binders full of these unused session plans that right. I'm, I'm never going to use. I may as well go. I should actually, after this, I should probably go through those and recycle some of that stuff. It's and recycle. Yeah. Working. Find it, be inspired. Yeah. What I yeah. tend to do, I have a fairly long commute, but even, you know, before that, when I didn't, um, there are things that you think about, you know, you have to think about your daily chores and whatnot, but when you're free to think about what you want, then I like to put myself in the shoes of characters that we've met and haven't met and kind of what would they do if, that's right. a that's a good yeah that's a good same as what you do with like this this player you're describing with his his alcoholic pilot yeah I'm sure he was drawing on life experience of people around him that he that he knew had various yeah. reliances on on alcohol or even just you know archetypal images or, or stereotypical images but he had to assemble yeah. this personality to communicate mm -hmm. this to to the group mm -hmm. and that's you're just doing that on a larger scale what does the city what is 1975 new york or 1931 boston mm -hmm. what is what is it what is the the the, the zeitgeist right what's the feel yeah. the tension what is the right? feel mm -hmm. and uh you know is it is it the son of sam period where people are are absolutely paranoid of their of their neighbors that and they're starting to watch mm -hmm. their kids for the first time in yep. history <laughs> you know yeah exactly and, yeah uh, fear city right the the brochure published by the mypd and the um FDNY, I think that it was yeah. like, yeah, you know, be afraid. Don't leave your hotel room after 6 p.m. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your kids yeah. are? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and how does that permeate the uh, the zeitgeist? To what is what is that going to, how is that going to change? And how will the, the players interact with that or attempt to? And and it's all an exercise of pretend. And and yeah. can you pretend in, in this uh, very specific setting with this specific guy, this, you know, a, a driver for the, the Gambino family, like, okay, so <laughs> what do you, like, what is your goal other than just live another day? One of the things that was interesting, and it's, again, it's, it comes back to your chestnut example, just little descriptions. Well, 1975, New York, there's no such thing as a non-smoking space. Right. So like players, like they describe coming into a restaurant, most restaurants, they're going to be Clouds. a haze of, of blue yeah. smoke just kind of rising up. Everyone's smoking on the bus. You know, like this is not, this is it's before the age of you can't have the secondhand smoke thing. Right. So it's yeah. just a little Airlines. detail that helps them imagine. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like New York now, but different. It's different. It's not the same. It's uh I, so I like one exercise we can do about preparation for improvisation. So you've got a driver for the Gambino crime family. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means a lot of sitting in a hot car and waiting or sitting in a cold exactly. car and waiting, exactly. listening to the radio. So what's yes. on the radio? What's on the radio? What's your favorite what's song? You know, having that radio play in the background. I, I, I do that actually in our group. I know some players have find that too distracting, but our, we keep the volume down low but I, I have that just streaming so that I can, and then I can change it. I've been experimenting a little bit with, uh, with kind of theme music for a, a character. Like I, I uh -huh. think that would be interesting to try to get, especially early on in the session, just to get them in that frame of mind. Yeah, this is me. This is my, this is my thing. So, but yeah, I think that's a, and so we do have a driver, right? We have a driver, we have the contact guy, kind of like the, the bird man from the John Wick movies, you know, that kind of guy. Right. And so the, they're, they're trying, you know, those kind of details. But I, I really like your suggestion of spending my prep time thinking of those, uh, those characters for which I'm responsible and yeah. what are they doing and why, how would they react to what happened there? And when the, Italian restaurant was bombed by the the Sinaloa cartel. Okay, so what would they be doing? What what is that? Right. What are the police up to? And who Action, is reaction interaction? Yeah, reaction. Yeah. And how is this? And you know the players when they did this and they had this altercation here and it was on public transit. Well, what's the transit authority doing? And what is the what's the mayor's response to this? And is there a is there there's something else? And what about the neighbors? What about just the common people? What are they up to now? What do you hear and, at the bus stop? 
What yeah. the, did the graffiti change? Are there posters exactly. up saying what's being done? <laughs> yeah. What's we want action on this. You know, they've gone too yeah. far, you know, like that. So I think that, uh, that more than just thinking of an interesting environment, um, I think that would help inform the environment, but what is the, what are the people reacting to? And then, then, um, you know, so I, I'm not thinking so much as to what's the size of the Italian restaurant and, you know, do they have the red and white checkered tablecloths or do they have the solid ones or is this, you know, is it a pizza joint and what do those look like in 1975? Right. I'm, I'm not worried so much about that. I'm more worried about, the uh relationships the, people, the relationships yeah, the motivations yeah. the and how those are evolving uh within the context of the game rules because i liked what you had said earlier that you know you're going to use the system to help design the the um what the villains are up to and what they can be up to and i think those yeah. are, are good systems uh depending on on the game you're using of course but uh, I like I like using those types of things going on. I've experimented with using some of Kevin Crawford's publications because uh, he does lean more into a sandbox style where you can you, you can have some um, different factions and how what the faction play is going to look like. So I have experimented a little bit with that, but I'm still early going. Right, because it it can it can expand, right? Once you play yeah. for long enough, and you've you've got this huge cast of of characters and these different mm -hmm. factions and all these things going on, and you simply don't have enough time to think about it. No. But you certainly don't have enough time to go follow through with the with the system aspects, the the, mm -hmm. the mechanisms of play for mm -hmm. all of it. So finding a, a a shorthand that you can trust. Yes, I I find very helpful because I I want to use the dice to determine if they're successful. Or not yes. successful me in too. their in their aims, yeah. Uh, because for me, it's not about the story. Otherwise, I would just decide. I would use my yes, GM exactly. fiat. Yes, yes, exactly. We would just be capricious because you and I probably are capricious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we would. But we would. I do think it's important to have the dice decide at the end of the day, and and not just be well for the interest of the story. This has to happen. I'm like, no, nah, you know, it's time. It's time for a setback. You know. Yeah, I that's, think that's really yeah. satisfying from an artistic. You know, to satisfy an artistic preference, right? And mm -hmm. the, the players all get sucked in. It's like, yeah, this is awesome, right? How am I going to get out of this this cool situation? Because sometimes mm -hmm. the dice just deliver success after success after success. Yeah, sometimes after they success. do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes they do. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Well, you've given me a lot to think about, Anthony. That's that's great. I'm I'm cool. definitely am leaning more. Like my prep has changed considerably from what it was previous, and sure. And I do think that it's a more efficient uh, use of time on the morning commute to think, well, instead of thinking, okay, so um, what's the encounter balance metrics for this next thing? And how many encounters do I need? And, you know, what is this, the, what is the map going to look like? And what is the treasure in this room? And rather than think so much about that, just thinking more about the motivation of the opponents and not just the opponents, but the other characters of interest in the, the ladies in the red yeah. dress what's the motivation what is she after yeah. and um, for your and, intention yeah yeah, yeah exactly the, and how has that other changed? intention you know yeah yeah exactly yeah. so i'll yeah, give you so one I, more one more little thing sure. i think that your your uh, talent for preparation might uh, you might enjoy and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't take very long so you like using background music, so real background music that the characters yeah. are really hearing. Yes. So you can also yeah. do news bulletins and advertisements. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, news and you ads. Use, just use a little voice changer and you know have have something playing in the background. And, Love it. Uh, some of the characters aren't even going to know. Some of the players aren't even going to notice mm -hmm. when it comes on, but some of them will. Yes, they will. And it's like. Wait, wait a minute and you know and, the, and yeah. they'll hear about a, a serial killer or they'll hear about a restaurant explosion or or whatever yes and they'll they'll wonder if they should care about it and yeah. uh you know it just it it just dials up the notch of it's like handing great. handing someone a, a will and testament and call of cthulhu saying you've just inherited this strange house in maine oh yeah <laughs> wait <laughs> quick <laughs> catch the next train to maine like we're going yeah I, I really like that idea of the news and ads. And, and I, what I like about that so much is that immediately my mind goes to, this is a way um, it, to provide that detail. Again, that 
that Without authentic talking, detail, yeah. but also an invitation to them for them to decide whether they're acting on their own um, or they're going to interact with that detail. So do I interact with that? Well, that's interesting. Well, there, you know, there's now talk about whether or not the feds are going to bail out New York City. New York City's going bankrupt. What does that mean for the, you know, like so that that is a that's a real story. And and whether it's real or not, I, I could make up fictional ones, of course. But right. but then the the players they can then interact with that. Well, this is maybe a time where bribes to the NYPD might be the police might be a little more amenable to taking a little bit of money because they're there's some question as to whether or not they're going to have a pension. There's some question as to whether the city is going to make payroll. Uh, so there's an, there's an op for players that are listening. And I want to reward players that are, that are listening for those kind of details. Like the, the you know, yeah. the wealthy uncle recluse uh, eccentric uncle that had left his strange leather bound books to someone <laughs> all of a sudden, like what, right. what is that all about? That, that's a interesting detail. You can interact with that. Um, you, you can choose to just continue acting as you're going through as your player with your own motivations, but just like the street urchin you mentioned with the, but I'm already, I'm still thinking about the street urchin. Where's his next meal going to come from? Like I've got, right. you're playing on the, like if I'm playing an uh, empathetic character, not some, you know, greedy so-and-so like myself in real life, but just a, a just an empathetic person it would be like, well, you know, I'm still, still bothers me that that little kid looks so hungry and where is he now? And it's snowing outside. And so there's, there's a, I really like the news and ads because it's a way to provide a little bit of exposition without it being an info dump. Like I don't uh, yeah. like the, cause I, I worry that players start to disengage like, okay, just tell me the salient points. Like give me the cliff notes version. Um, right. I don't want to read, you know, volume copious amounts of, of block text for them yeah. to just make a little through. 15 second. Just like, that's why I, I think the, the headline's a great idea. Like there's, there's someone hawking newspapers on the side of the road, and what what are the, what's the headline? What is the the big news thing? So, or like you said, there so and so's waiting for to catch the bus, and what are they talking what about at the bus station? About? about the bus stop, you know. Those are those. That's great. Uh, I'm going to add that for sure. That's a that's a great idea, and I haven't done much of that. I'm going to do more of that. So that's how I get. That's how I make myself comfortable that I can present that full world mm -hmm. not not so full there's no room for the pcs but they that it's easy for the players to imagine there's other people around their characters and yes. that that everybody has some kind of agenda in their life and and that mm -hmm. they can feel comfortable if they want to talk to the the guy hawk in the newspapers yeah that he'll have something to say because i'm he'll aware of what the news yeah. items are and that yeah. kind of stuff so and if i've done that preparation for improvisation then when they do decide to interact, then I've already kind of thought it through enough that I can I can have that be a short but meaningful interaction. So it's not just a it's punchy, it's short, it's not some boring. Okay, you know, every time you go in to buy your coffee in the morning, we have to go through a half an hour of role play that's tedious. No, it doesn't have to be that way. It's just hey, have you heard the news? It's a or it's a shame what it was going on there. I just can't believe that. You know, my cousin just got laid off. Whatever. You know, they, there's there's something there that's some that's um that's punchy enough without being tedious for everyone else. That's yeah to reinforce the environment yeah. you're you're going exactly for. exactly cool. Well, this right. has been really valuable for me, Anthony. I appreciate you. I enjoyed uh, it myself. Having this conversation with me. I've, I feel like I've gotten more out of it, than, but I do appreciate your time. That's great. So. I, I really enjoy talking with people who are investigating their play. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if they're trying something new, if they're going back to something old, but that, that they're thinking about it with intention and, and wanting to, to make some changes and, and I, I find that process really exciting. So, so yeah. thanks for coming on. Yeah, me too. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time. All right. My pleasure. Take care. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Anthony.